What's up guys, I'm Brian Lovett, AKA B-Love. Today we're gonna to talk about mask straps for the Bolivar coronavirus mask. Let's get into it. Now, if you've been following along in my last few videos, you'll know that I've been talking about the Bolivar style mask design. And I was fortunate that those guys that actually designed the mask reached out to me and we got to sit down virtually, of course, social distancing and everything. Uh, and we had a Zoom call and those are just fantastic human beings. I got to talk to them for a, a good while. And similar to a lot of us, they went through dozens of different mask designs, kind of tweaking and iterating until they came up with the design for the Bolivar mask, which I think is the current best design for something that you can mass produce and get out in large quantities that kind of checks all the boxes as far as what you want out of a mask. I did a video on that if you want to check that out below. Now, we started talking about other things like the filter media used, which I'm gonna do a video on after this, so stay tuned for that. And another topic that came up was the actual clasps or the, the hooks, the way you actually strap these to your face. And I had mentioned to them that I had had trouble finding a suitable print that allows you to get the masks on and off quickly and easily. Of course, being the guys that they are, they actually had a solution for that. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. One of the design elements that I really like about the Bolivar mask is these large openings for the straps. Now they've taken it a step further though, which I think is incredible, and they've made these. One of the cool things about this is you see the, the way it's designed, it has this kind of nub that sticks out and then it has a place for you to put your straps. So you can take a nylon strap, for example, you can run it through here and then it's adjustable. You can tighten it and loosen it to fit your face. The cool thing is this just slides right into those large openings they have here. You can take it on and off, as you can tell, nice and easily. So it's, it's sort of a built-in quick release for the masks. Obviously, I don't have any you know, stretchy material, any nylon, anything like that. So I've got my, my TPU straps, which are, I mean, kind of jankety at best, but it's good enough for display purposes, right? So if you put this on, you can see that you can take one of these and you simply pop it in. You can take the other one and again, sort of pop that in. And now this mask is so firmly secured to my face. You can see it coming in here. And thankfully, because of the TPU, it's still comfortable, but man, this is super fast to get on and off. If I want to take it off, I just pop this off, pop this off, and now I've got the mask out. And these are, of course, adjustable because like, you know, any stretchy material, you can just pull these through and tighten them on the ends. So what a cool design. I really think this is clever, and, and those guys did a fantastic job with it. So let's take a look at how those print in an Octolapse, which I never get tired of a good Octolapse. I mean, it's just, it's cool every time you see it, right? I'll, I should probably do a video on setting up Octolapse given that. Now, let's go ahead and do my favorite thing and snap those off the build plate. Come with me. This is by far the most satisfying part of 3D printing. Awesome, let's go take a look. Now, like everything else, I printed these out of PETG instead of PLA. I think PLA would just be too brittle for this use case. I also experimented with a couple of different ways of aligning these on the build plate, and I think I've arrived at kind of the ideal situation, and I'll show you the, the kind of iterations I went through on that and why I arrived at this. Now, when I first started printing these, I printed them the way I think you would normally naturally orient them. I had this large bottom surface area down on the build plate. Now, that makes sense, but there's two reasons why that kind of sucks. Because of this big bridge here, you have to have a lot of support material in here, if you can see that. And if you have ever worked with PETG before, you know that getting that support material out is going to be a massive pain. Now, I made it a little bit easier by changing the width of the support material so that it has the minimum amount of filament touching both surfaces. So I can kind of slide a butter knife in there and just knock it out. But the other issue I had with this was I was actually breaking some of these 
even just getting the, uh, the support material out. And I think it's because of the orientation of this and it actually, it makes sense. This is gonna be the weakest way you could print this. And because if you look, the way an FDM printer prints, it's going to print each layer up, up, up. And so if you look at the way the layers are oriented, if you apply a lot of force to this piece when it's in the mask, this thing is gonna naturally snap at those layer lines and snap like this. And that actually happened with a couple of those early attempts. Watch, you can see this. See how it just broke really easily there? And this is a child size mask, by the way. I printed these at 80%, and so this is smaller than uh, you would normally print these at. But you can see, just like we thought, because of those layer lines, it snapped right where I thought it would. So how did we fix that? We changed the way we oriented the parts on the build plate. What you can see here is that now we've got these oriented on the side. And so there's just, there's supports on the side that come up to that first bridge piece. Now I added a five millimeter brim as well. That way when it's printing, it doesn't have a tendency to come off the build plate because there's such a small area that's actually touching the build plate. The cool thing about this too is that now those layer lines are going this way. So it seems like it's gonna be less likely to snap here. And in fact, why don't we test that? You can see this is an example of one with the layer lines, the opposite orientation. And if we take that and we flex it, you can see how flexible that is. I mean, I'm torquing it pretty good and it's not budging. So this is gonna be a lot more durable. This is gonna stand up to day-to-day -day use much better. And that brings me to kind of a, a point with 3D printing. When you're printing functional pieces, small details like the way that you orient the piece on the print bed or the way your layer lines are stacked up actually matters. As you saw with that other one, just applying a little bit of force here caused it to snap, but now these are much, much stronger. And so try to pay attention to a little bit of those details when you're printing something that's a functional part and uh, it can go a long way and make a big difference. Now, of course, I just wanted to give you guys that quick how-to on that. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions. As always, I will supply links to all these models as well as pre-sliced ones in the Slack channel. And if you haven't joined the Slack channel yet, there's a link down below to do so. Now, as I always say, it's fine to use these masks for home use. If you are printing these for a hospital or for medical use, of course, take as many precautions as you can during the build process. And also check with the hospitals first to find out if they want face shields, face masks, and if they have a preference on the design that's being used. The last thing you wanna do is print stuff that can't be used by medical professionals on the front lines. I also wanna give two special thank yous, one to the Bolivar team for pouring their heart and soul into this project and really putting a lot of effort out there and staying involved with the community throughout the entire process. I also wanna thank my Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much. This is kind of a dream come true for me to be out here on YouTube, kind of putting these messages out and getting to do something that I enjoy doing on a daily basis. So your support means the world to me. Thank you guys so much and we'll talk soon. See ya.